my guest today is an English qualified lawyer from a magic circle law firm and a renowned Sharia scholar with many titles under his belt. He's a leading figure in the global Islamic finance industry. He's a founding partner and co-chairman of Dome Advisory. He's vice chair of Mosaic as well as UK Catalyst. He's also a senior advisor to the All Party Parliamentary Group, as well as being Freeman of the City of London. I welcome Sheikh Bilal Khan to Pathway Group offices today. He's in the capacity of a judge for the Asian Apprenticeship Awards. Hi, welcome, Sheikh. Thank you so much for coming down today to Birmingham. You yeah, uh, you're wearing multiple hats uh, in in your sort of many jobs that you're in. Obviously, you're wearing a hat of a judge today. Just told us a little bit about your other other work and your other experiences and other organisations you're involved with, Sheikh. Oh, thank you, Safraz. You know, it's, it's a pleasure, and, and I'd like to thank you and Pathway and, and, and everybody else's affiliated sponsors and group, wider media partners, everybody. This is something that's in need of a time, so um, I, I really commend you on that. In terms of my background, uh, let, let's speak about judging. Yes. I, I'm okay. also a judge on the UK government's Cyrus programme, which is a huge um, uh, entrepreneurship programme the, across the globe. So I sit on that. I also, I'm also vice chairman of the Prince of Wales Trust Mosaic International Leadership Panel, which yes. covers 80 countries, and we choose the best young entrepreneurs. Uh, on that board, we have the Emirates Airline Foundation chairman and various other people. So that's some of the judging work I do. Um, I am a lawyer by profession, an English qualified lawyer. As you mentioned, yeah. uh, I worked with the top five law firms known as Magic Circle. Magic Circle yeah. So I, I qualified with Linklater, the second biggest firm uh, in that ranking, depending on revenues yeah. and equity you look at. Uh, I worked on corporate mergers and acquisitions, banking, capital markets, big ticket work, some of yeah. the stuff that makes headlines. Uh, and, and if you roll back before that, I, I s traditionally went through an Islamic upbringing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a crazy match that I have, you know, I memorized the Quran when I was 11 years old, uh, went off to Madrasa and, and did the Islamic studies and became an Imam, like a priest or a rabbi equivalent. Uh, and then went on the journey of this legal studies, LLB at University of Leeds, LPC, Masters and, and did an MBA. Yeah. In fact, also lectured at the University of Leeds on law uh, at one time, and, and this was very interesting. Now, I was uh, following that, I've been working in various kind of ambassadorial yeah. advisory work. I, I'm one of 20 odd UK government business ambassadors. I sit on the UK Foreign Office's Middle East Association, and that is, uh, it was created in 1962. It looks at the Arab countries, yeah. North Africa, Middle East, and, and has a huge network of ambassadors, current ambassadors, serving ambassadors, and previous ambassadors. And I sit on the board with some very high profile people, six of us, I think. Uh, this Sir David Wotton, Dame Fiona Wolfe, who's the second female to be a Lord Mayor in 826 years, yeah. uh, Sir Mark Moody Stewart, former chairman of Shell, uh, and Sir Simon Mayle, former colonel and, and uh, high ranking army general. So it's a really, really influential position. I'm also acting as a senior advisor to the all party parliamentary group uh, on, on various countries and various industries. Uh, as, so it allows me to have access to government, to policy making, to laws. Uh, and I'm working in a kind of ad hoc basis as a special advisor to various governments yeah. uh, around the world, you know, prime ministers and, and senators and other f figures. So there's a lot I do. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I would describe myself in, as a, someone who has a portfolio career. You know, allows me to give ad hoc advice uh, and also to add value where it's needed. So thank you very much for sharing that. I really, it's an honour for us for you to be for, for, for you to be here with us again, supporting us with the Asian Apprenticeship Awards. Uh, you talked a little bit about your bringing in terms of the madrasa, the Sharia aspect of it, in terms of what you're known for. There can't be many people who can claim the fact that they've gone down the Islamic route as well, as well as obviously you know commercial and and uh, the, the success that you achieved. So again, you know. Uh, you know, uh, congratulations and, and uh, th thank you for that. Uh, in terms of in terms of obviously your, your work with entrepreneurship and and sort of businesses, I know you're you you know you you were involved with a series called Success as well. Tell us a little bit about about that about, the, about that series if you if you can. Well, um, what happened was this was <coughs> commissioned a few years ago. The documentary was known as uh, Secrets of Secrets Success, of and and uh, the the whole part was is to look at the journeys of various people, 20 leading personalities of the City of London. Yeah. Uh, it has um, Greg Dyke, who was just recently yeah. the, the chairman of the Football Association, previously was the director general of BBC. Yeah. Uh, Sir John Egan, former chairman of uh, the CBI, former chairman of Jaguar. Uh, Fiona Wolfe, Lord Mayor yeah. of City of London. And, and high power figures. High figures, yeah. and <coughs> some of them are twice my age. Yeah. And, and me being a you know, person from diverse background, an ethnic minority, uh, it was really interesting. It's, it covered my life journey. From, from being a son of a, a textile factory worker in Bradford, 
you know, who, who worked all hours. God yeah, gave him yeah, yeah. Uh, an, a mother who doesn't speak a word of English, but obviously gave us a lot of love. Yeah. A grandfather being in the British Navy. To that journey from, from there and, and all the way across where I am. Uh, and, and the various potholes in the road I had to face and yeah, how I navigated through yeah, all that. Yeah. And a bit of my poetry I've picked up as well. So yeah. uh, I have a passion for poetry. So, uh, I, did, I didn't know that. Uh, I really do. I mean, uh, actually, the way they've, they've done the, the series, they finish with, they start with me and they finish with me. And the very last line is one of the poems I share. I'll share yeah. that with you. Yeah. That's uh, Iqbal's great poem. He says, and it's actually motivation for yeah. people who are kind of down and or maybe not achieving what they want to achieve yeah. in life. And he says, addressing us as eagles. Yeah. Oh, eagle, don't fear the stormy wind blowing from the opposite direction. This is blowing to make you fly even higher. Even higher. Wow. Wow. It's just amazing. So that is, that is life. I mean, that is my message to people. The secret of my success has been perseverance, dedication, and just just have that will. Yeah. You never give up. They never say die attitude. And you will succeed. It's not just about hard work. It's about smart work. And, and, and it's good to be technical in wherever, wherever area you are, whether you're a business person, an academic, or whatever it is. But try to find networks. Because it, when you have a good pool of contacts, contacts, it endorses your personality, it adds value to your credibility, and reputation is what counts. Yeah, yeah. You know, in today's time, reputation is in his hands. It's everything, isn't it? Reputation yeah. is everything, as I say. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned very briefly Freeman of the City. I mean, how, how was? You know, tell us a little bit about that as well, if you yeah. don't mind. So, yeah. just actually one, one more thing about yeah. the secrets of success. Yeah. That's now actually showing on B uh, British Airways, British Airways yeah. in flight, you yeah. know, which is a, a really big uh, achievement. Yeah. And w one of my friends was traveling and said, Oh, I saw you in British Airways. And I didn't know that, you know, I just found out through yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of freedom of the City of London, I mean, this is a great honor, personally, for me. Uh, to, to look at the previous honorary uh, freedmen of the city like Nelson Mandela, yeah. Winston Churchill, uh, Michael Bloomberg, governor of New York and New founder York, of yeah. Bloomberg. Yeah, Bloomberg yeah. So it's, I've been working for the last best part of one and a half decades uh, promoting the city of London globally. So I've traveled in two and a half years, I've done about 52 countries promoting why City of London should attract investments, yeah. uh, whether it's Islamic finance or uh, in other ways talking about the values of English common law, the, 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 um, the tax structures we have, London Stock Exchange, uh, various arbitration centers. And as a result, I've, I've helped promote the business coming into the, uh, to the city. Um, and, and that allowed me to be in position. I didn't know this at the time, but two very senior people in the city, Sir David Wooten, former Lord Mayor um, of the City of London, and uh, Sir Paul Judge, Judge Business School, Cambridge University, were right. the two signatories who signed for me to become a freeman right. of the city. Right. It was a great, honor, you know, a great uh, honor for me, and uh, I took my mum along. My father passed away sadly a few years ago, right. and and it's a, it was a great, you know, sense of achievement. For me, it's it's more about being a, a positive role model yeah. for our youth, your people from the BAME background, especially, and youth across the country, because I think too many people have this approach in life that. It, life is almost like a hierarchical structure. You've got to do like 50 years before you get to the top. Yeah. What I'm trying to defy the odds, as long as you've got the quality, the attitude is there and the aptitude, yeah. there's no reason why you can't achieve the high altitude. Yes. You know, so there's no reason why you can't go that way. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully this will inspire other people. Yeah. I've done a lot of mentoring as well. It's important to have a mentor in your life. It's very important to have a mentor when you're going through. And a mentor should be someone who's seen it, done it, worn the t-shirt. Yeah. Is that, is that what the mosaic is about? Is that, is that your role with, yeah. with mosaic? mosaic does that. We do a lot of mentor, mentorship work through there. I personally didn't have a mentor throughout my life, yeah. uh, but um, I got a mentor last couple yeah. of years, someone called David Carter. Carter. And David Carter is one of the famous men. He's actually known as The Mentor, if you look him up. And yeah. I recommend one of his books called The Breakthrough. Yeah. Um, and it's a self-mentoring book. He's an amazing guy. He's mentored some of the biggest billionaires and the richest people in the world. Uh, and I was quite lucky to bump into him and, and you know, one thing led to another. So I've had a few sessions with him. And <clears throat> if I can give that golden yeah, advice please. to people, it, it's, his ad advice has been to, uh, to me, be the best possible version of yourself. Never settle at something. If you're a doctor, don't think you've done it. Yeah. If you become a... a, a Just keep a, a, pushing yourself. Keep pushing yourself. Keep pushing yourself. And, and the other thing I, I, I took from him, but... I've kind of put my flavor to it and I call it the four E's, right. which is whatever you do in life, yeah. you need to enjoy it. Yeah. You've got you to gotta love it, really. You've got, you got to enjoy it. Yeah. You've got to be good at it, so we call it excel in it. Excel if, you're, if, if you enjoy it but you're not good at it, you're not going to go far. You have to earn from it because if you don't make you money, make a living. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you got, you'll end up going somewhere else. Yeah. And the fourth one is to empower others and make a difference in society. If, you're just, if it's just about you, you just won't about feel you. a sense of you achievement. You've got to give back a little bit. Yeah, yeah. satisfaction of giving back. 
you know, and if and, and that's important. That you know, lifestyle. Because if you go down to certain professions or businesses, and and and, and our community, Indian, Pakistani, Bengali yeah, community, Somali, yeah. have done really well. But you'll find they haven't got time for family, or their health suffers. Yeah. So I say to people, make balance, make yeah. the right balance. Have everything in balance, you know, because you're not going to get those hours again with your family when you're in your 50s or 60s and you've lost that, you know, time with your child, you know, so it's important to put that in. Wow, that's the 40s. Yeah, 40s. Just remind us, remind us again, enjoy it. Enjoy it, excel in it. Excel in it, earn from it. Earn from it and empower and empowered others. Empower others, empower others, yeah. Empower others yeah. Yeah. Wow, fantastic, fantastic. So, Sheikh, Sheikh you, you shared with us the, the journey that you've had in terms of academic route. You've obviously gone into uh, a big uh, a law, law company, Magic Circle, we talked about. Uh, in terms of, obviously, the apprenticeship route, there's a lot of options now for individuals to go down and, and have a professional care, career without actually going down an academic route, a uh, vocational, vocational route. But maybe the Asian community and maybe some of the other communities are not aware of those options as well. And again, some of the courses that we're trying to do is to, to, to raise awareness of that. Can you just tell us a little bit about your thoughts in terms of career progression and again opportunities available? I think I think it's important to have that um, because traditionally you, you you think that there's only one way yeah. and that you if you don't do well in your GCSEs or A levels and you don't go to university you failed in life. That's not right. I think you get more hands-on experience and you get earlier exposure. And actually, you get paid early as well, <laughs> yeah. because as an apprentice, yeah. someone who goes to university, and let's take any route, let's take an accountant's route, yeah. or a banker, or a lawyer's route, you're a trainee, you're just about covering, you're paying your student loan off, yeah. you're paying the rent, you you're, hardly you, have anything you're left. You're in debt. And you're, you're in you're, debt. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. The model that we have today, unfortunately, uh, the way kind of businesses and education is, it's very expensive, and it's very debt finance based. Everything in life happens to be over leveraged. Yes. And that's why we have a, a global economic uh, uh, landscape which is full of boom and bust. Every few years as an economic cycle comes and, and the world goes through a financial crisis. Yeah. One bank collapses, another bank collapses. We had the same thing here with Northern Rock and Run. Yes. RBS had its problems. It's heavily leveraged. Yeah. Heavily leveraged, and it's extremely, our, you know, from our toasters to our bed to our, to our car to our house, everything's on debt and on fiat money, which is not even real money. Because this paper money is actually money because the central bank has signed it, underwritten it. Yeah. But if we go into a Greece-like, country-like scenario, yeah. and this paper is just a paper, yeah. we've lost. Because there was a time when money meant that banks were holding certain amount of gold in their vaults, and that represented that. That's they don't, not they the don't case. do that anymore, yeah. So this is why Islamic finance is so important. So I actually recommend apprenticeships. And I think there's a lot of industries you can go into. We're not just talking about, uh, you know, being a mechanic or something else. Yeah, you can go just into, K yeah, yeah, you can yeah. into, you know, uh, KPMGs and law firms. Yeah. We'll take you under their wings and give you an amazing opportunity. Maybe slightly longer career, but actually you'll come out as a chartered accountant at the end of it, and you'll be paid from the, from your teens. So it's something worth looking at, not just for those who are you know financially disadvantaged, but actually those who want to have on the job experiential learning uh, and want to get that exposure to the market. Because remember, theory is one thing. It's about you know if you want to learn to fly a plane or you want to be a driver of anything you've got to get into practice you've got to, you've got to do it, but yeah. today the, the the theory is so stretched it takes you 10 years before you get any exposure now as a lawyer from former lawyer who worked in the city of london um the way the setup is and this is across the board in yeah. any industry you join a firm you pick up the skills that are required whether it's legal or accounting but you don't ever get access to the clients until you get to the top of the apex. Why? Because it's an incentive structure where the partners at the top of the directors will not want it. They want to use you to feed themselves. Now, you don't get business savviness. You don't get the commercial now. And because You're you can't do that... You're back office, are you? Yeah, back office. And tomorrow, if you leave that structure, you've got nothing. Because it's not just a matter if you can draft legal contracts, it's can you attract clients. And that business knowledge, then business know-how is very important. And that can come through apprenticeships from day one.